This week, what is the best adventure photo backpack? Plus, I take a question on using tripods in the surf. Well, hey everybody, Hudson here. Welcome to Approaching the Scene. And I just wanna cut to the chase this week. I think that F-Stop is making the best adventure photo backpacks and I'll explain my reasoning behind that. I've used other brands, I've tried them out, both you know, Mindshift, Shimoda, some others, and I think that F-Stop is just making the best designed adventure backpack. I'll explain my reasoning behind that. I'm also gonna talk about a really cool Osprey pack that I use quite a bit with F-Stop's internal camera units and why I really like that pack and I think it's a cool thing for you to check out. So, you know, my wife teases me about the amount of gear I have, particularly in two categories. I have so many backpacks and so many pairs of hiking boots, shoes, approach shoes, trail running shoes. Uh, and yet, you know, the, the, the funny thing is I almost invariably am just wearing flip-flops around. But when I need that precision piece of foot gear, I want to have just the right one for the situation that I'm facing. And it's the same thing with backpacks. You know, I came into photography because I was a mountaineer, backcountry adventurer. I really, really kind of came up traipsing about the North Cascades around here, really rugged, rocky peaks, glaciers. Uh, I'm a backcountry skier, you know, and, and I'm often carrying ropes, protection equipment, skis, boots, you name it. And, and so carrying a, a pack that actually protects your back and puts all the weight on your hips and is comfortable, durable, became more and more critical. And as I've gotten older, you know, I've been on trips in the Arctic unsupported for two weeks crossing the Brooks Range or into remote peaks in the Alaska Range doing first ascents where we're dropped off for two weeks and picked up later. And in those cases, you absolutely have to rely on your backpack. You know, the, the backpack of choice for me on these big adventures is a huge Gregory, you know, 9,000 cubic inch pack that expands and carries, you know, everything you need for weeks in the wilderness. And its harness system is just state of the art. You know, the way, the way it works is it, it, you bolt it in on your waist and it puts all of the weight in that pack right onto your, oh, I gotta loosen it up here a little bit. Puts all that weight, there we go, right on your waist so that there's nothing on your shoulders at all. It's all harnessed right to your waist. There's just a sternum strap to kind of keep it from coming off of your shoulders. And you can adjust the weight in towards you and out with these pull straps back behind. And when I would carry camera gear, the, the big problem is it's not super accessible. So, you know, let's say, you run into a wolf in the Arctic suddenly along the trail. You know, and so I, in the old days, as I'm carrying big DSLRs and even film gear back in the early days of my, of my adventures, I would strap these big camera holsters to my chest. And you can see I got kind of an elaborate system for that. And to be honest, I don't use this huge case much anymore unless I need a big DSLR with a 70 to 200 on it for some reason. So I'll just kind of get rid of that. I still take this pack if I need to go someplace deep, deep. And I'm just gonna put my gear in F-Stop's padded internal camera units inside here with all the essentials that I need to survive for that time out there. The thing that I was so disappointed in as I really got more and more into photography was the fact that so many of the camera backpacks that we have out there, you know, and I don't wanna call any brands out in particular, were just this sort of straight, flat-backed, Thing, not shaped ergonomically whatsoever with a couple of kind of not hardly adjustable padded straps for your shoulder and then kind of a cursory waist belt back there. And these, you know, also they're really wonderfully padded to keep your gear protected, but there's no place in there for a water bottle or to shift things around so that your camera's in part of there and you've got clothing and food and other things that you need. So, you know, just going out on a photo adventure in the woods, you had to sort of strap everything but the camera gear to the outside of this thing. And as you put it on, the waist strap, they never were long enough, these packs, you know, from multiple brands. It doesn't really put the weight on your hips. You can tighten it, and it just sort of squeezes your stomach, but everything goes sliding down and all the weight winds up on your shoulders. And I think, you know, anybody who's been working with DSLRs and SLRs and heavy glass and metal, 
and probil bodies knows your back's not going to last very long carrying something that way. So the first camera backpack that I actually encountered that seemed to fit the bill for shorter adventures where I don't need my huge Gregory pack was F-Stop. And I, I, I got the F-Stop Suka bag some years ago, and I've carried it in Africa and Patagonia and all over the place, really, you know, from mountaintops to remote photo workshops, jungles, and it's really, really held up well. The thing that I love about it is this easy access back panel. The thing's ergonomically shaped to fit your back. It's got a really nice harness system that actually is adjustable and fits around your waist. And they have these replaceable internal camera units. This is a, a large pro internal camera unit in this bag. You can pop it out. You can load up this bag so that there's a bunch of blank space. You can use smaller camera units. They have even these small, narrow camera units that you can just load the bag with that and have nothing but tents, bivy sacks, backpacking gear, food, extra clothing, whatever else. You know, the, the, you can mix and match, and then the bag is filled with all kinds of little pockets just designed for photographers, you know, expanding side pockets, little battery pockets clear plastic pouches, pockets within pockets, you know, all these little hidey holes that we photographers like to have in our bags. And I've used this for a number of years. You can see it's got a lot of wear on it. And now that I'm getting into the mirrorless revolution, I feel like this bag's a little bit bigger than I need a lot of the time. So I was looking for a new camera bag that's just slightly smaller than this. Something that's easier to just toss on with a single body and some smaller lenses and the stuff that I need for an adventure. So, you know, I'm not getting rid of my Suka for bigger adventures. The Suka is still going to be the bag for me. But I started looking around and I, I, I spent a lot of time looking at everybody's camera bags. And it really came down to me to Shimoda and F-Stop. And I have three friends with Shimodas. I have two friends with the big Shimoda, one friend with the smaller Shimoda. I've put them on. I've worn them. They're a great bag. They have a really nice ergonomic suspension system, just like F-Stop. F-Stop has upped the game some with their latest bags. They have more modular accessories. The whole exterior is waterproofed, although I'd still carry a pack cover just in case. It's probably going to wear out eventually. Um, it's just a better build quality, a little bit better thought out. But Shimoda has a lot of those same things. The difference for me is that Shimoda's modular internal camera dividers are very, very lightly padded. Your gear kind of just bounces around in them. I don't feel like they're all that protective. And while it's neat that they have an adjustable shoulder strap system that moves up and down the outside of the bag to fit different body sizes well, I think that's a great thing. The way they did it looks like a failure point to me. Man, I've had shoulder straps fail on trips before. And it's not a lot of fun. I remember spending half a day in the Alaska range with a giant leather awl and, and a rock trying to shove it through to, to sew my strap back on, and then the strap didn't fit right for the, another four days of backpacking with about 60 pounds on my back. Not a lot of fun. Um, and I, I just think that the F-Stop bags are built in a really durable, durable way. I also like the fact that F-Stop utilizes this gatekeeper system I'll show you in a second to make attaching things to your bag really, really simple. And it's actually kind of a mil-spec thing that the, the US military uses this same system in a lot of their equipment. They have all these little points that you might want to attach something. And these straps that you can buy called gatekeepers that have different links where you can just slip it in there. Whoop, all of a sudden, you've got a strap. You can strap a tent on the bottom of your bag or a sleeping bag up on the top of your bag or your tripod on the bottom of the bag. Um, their bags are built with the intention of having backcountry skis or tripods or whatever attached to the side. Internally, again, you know, this is their Talopa, the new Talopa. And it's very much like the Suka, just a little bit more modern design. I've got my tripod on it. Let me show you how it fits when I put it on. I got this thing loaded up with everything I would need for a good, uh, day out of photography. It's got a nice waist strap that hits me in just the right spot. I can get all of the weight onto that strap. It's not hanging on my back. It's on my waist. And then it's got a good sternum strap to just keep the load from moving back and forth. Is it as comfortable as my Gregory strap system? No, it's not. 
It's got a whistle built in. You get in trouble, you, can, you get an emergency whistle, that's nice. You can pull the load in and out like you can with my Gregory. It's a nice harness system. It's the best harness system that I've felt on a camera back. Shimoda has a really comfortable suspension system too. One of the problems with Shimoda for me is that the, the shoulder straps are so wide. They've got all these pockets built into them, which is convenient, but it feels like you're wearing a vest, kind of when you have a Shimoda bag on. If you look at the photos, you'll see what I mean. That and that attachment point and just the thinness of the dividers. So <clears throat> with this bag, it's a little bit smaller, fits carry-on much better. I've got my big tripod strapped on the side. I don't feel like there's extra weight on one side or the other when I put a tripod on the back like this, which is kind of a big deal. Um, I like the fact that F-Stop makes these large sized tripod dry bags. So this holds my whole fluid head with a six and a half foot tall, seven foot tall tripod on board, keeps it dry, keeps it out of the elements, keeps it from getting hit by trees and stuff as I'm hiking. And that bag that F-Stop sells is basically like a little dry bag fold down and it's got this daisy chain to clip through the side straps on this bag, which is really nice. If I just want to carry the tripod without that, it has this nice hook here which catches backcountry ski bindings or it puts two of the, it puts all three of feet of the tripod in there and just locks them in and then I just put the, uh, the compression straps around and lock the rest of the tripod in. Um, I've got a bunch of cool stuff in here. So easy access again on the back. It's got, I've got a sloped medium internal camera unit. They have all these different internal camera units that you can buy. I like the fact that they, they strap into the pack. There's a Velcro system that just locks them in place so they can't move, they can't fall backward. It lets you put lighter weight things back behind the gear while you have that heavy camera gear right up against your back. That's a more ergonomic way to carry things. Whenever you're loading packs for big trips, you always wanna put the heavy stuff down low right by the small of your back because that way it's on your hips more. If it gets out, it pulls you backwards and it's, it's less ergonomic. Um, you can see in here, I got my Nikon Z7, a 50 millimeter on there. I would normally have the, the um, 24 to 70, but I'm filming with that right now. I got the 70 to 200, 2.8 Nikkor in there, filters, uh, my 14 to 30 Nikkor. My 20 millimeter 1.8 I love for Sunstar's hoods and a doubler for the, or a 1.4 teleconverter for the, for, the, for the 70 to 200. I've got this neat F-stop bag that's padded. I can put all kinds of stuff. I've got lighting equipment in here. I've got uh, remote trigger equipment. I've got cleaning gear. I could put uh, you know, a, a, my 10 millimeter lens in here. There's padded dividers that are adjustable in this, in this guy. In here, I've got another little f-stop travel bag that's not padded, but it's a really nice way to hold all my panoramic, uh, advanced panorama equipment. I got a jacket in here. You know, everything's accessible from this nice, easy opening back panel, which I think is just awesome. It also has top access, so you can open right from the top. And you know, I can pull my jacket and all that stuff out of the top of the bag. Again, I can put different sized internal camera units in there. It's got a really nice mesh pocket right here that you got. You can store extra necessities. It has a pocket for your laptop and or hydration bladder and a spot for your hydration bladder uh, line to go out. One thing that's cool that F-Stop makes is a hydration bladder waterproof pouch. So you put your hydration bladder inside this completely sealed waterproof pouch. And if there was a failure, you wouldn't get your camera gear wet. It would just be stuck inside that pouch. Um, there's a whole bunch of top pocket places to store and hold things. There's a big, huge front pocket with internal organizers. There's places to mount a skateboard, a snowboard, or your tripod on the front of the bag. And like I said, there's all of these gatekeeper accessory pieces, which you can use to do all manner of things. One thing I love to do is mount my chest mount for my camera on there. So I get this thing mounted up and it's as simple, I have these gatekeepers hanging off these uh, mounts right on the shoulder strap. Click and 
click, and all of a sudden, I've got F-Stop's new kind of ultra lightweight waterproof Naveen pouch right here, which can hold my, uh, my camera with, you know, up to a 200 millimeter lens. Easy to take off by just clip, clip. I could also mount a shoulder strap from these D-rings. If I just want to carry that around, I could carry a lightweight shoulder strap so I can leave my pack behind. Uh, a nice thing about this particular pouch is if you want to carry a shorter lens, it sort of collapses and has these two little catches gets smaller, all of a sudden you're not carrying as long a pouch, say you just want to carry it with the 24 to 70 on there, you're set. Really light, really nice, I'm digging it. So their accessory line is just fantastic. Um, and the pack quality is really, really great. I've just been enjoying using it. I've kind of waited, I've been using this for a couple of months now. I hit them up, uh, they sent me this pack for me to check out. I've looked at the other packs, like I said, I talked to them again and I've decided just based on wearing this pack around for a while and my experience with the Suka bag and how good they've been with their customer service and chatting with me to become a, uh, to become an F-Stop ambassador. So, you know, with uh, any, any uh, disclaimer there, I am becoming an F-Stop ambassador. I'm not being paid to do this review in any way, shape or form. I just really like the product. So one of the other things I really dig about F-Stop is by using these internal camera units, you know, let's say you get stuck late on the airplane and you can't get on with your bag. You can just pop that internal camera unit out. It has a zipper front cover, carry it, stuff it under your seat, keep all your camera gear with you and you don't have to, you don't have to check the important stuff. You can just throw the shell in the, in the gate check. Um, speaking to that, Another thing I really like is that I'm using these internal camera units, which kind of move in and out of the bag and these pieces. And I have a bag that I absolutely love to take backcountry skiing. It's called the, uh, the Osprey Camber. And they make a women's version too. So there's a men's version as the Camber, the women's version, I can't remember the name, but I'll put links to all this stuff in the uh, description for the video. If you go down and show more, I'll have links to the F-Stop gear that I've been talking about and links to this Osprey bag, both for men and women. The cool thing about this bag, it doesn't have as many cool little pockets for photographers. It's not designed around photography, but it has that same kind of back access. It has a wonderful harness system that's extremely comfortable and ergonomically designed. Osprey is making great bags these days. But when you pop it open, you know, one thing that's really cool is the water bladder fits into this whole back part. So the shoulder straps and everything come forward with the water bag. And because I'm a backcountry skier, it has an insulated shoulder sleeve where the, the water bladder actually has its hose right inside your, your padded insulated sleeve so you won't freeze. And that weight is right against your back. And then you can really easily put, you know, an F-stop medium sized uh, camera block in here. And so you got access to several lenses and your camera all, you know, or the, the ICU. So your, your, your F-stop ICU can fit right in this bag, along with all the gear that you need for backcountry skiing or for a hike or for whatever it is. So if you're going light, you're just taking a camera and a couple lenses, and it, you know, you want a little bit more um, pure adventure designed bag from an outdoor brand, I think this Osprey Camber is a really, really great bag. It's a good multi-purpose adventure bag. So um, it's another one that I've really been enjoying. And I think, you know, people that are, that are in the market for a lightweight, just take a few things adventure bag. This one's cool, mainly because of that big wide open back access panel. So that's basically it for my take on why I'm becoming an F-Stop ambassador, or why I like their gear so much. Um, it just, it served me extremely well. And I think that the, the 2020 gear that or the 2019 gear that I'm looking at seems even better than the gear I had before. So my two bags that I'm using from them are the Talopa and the Suka. It's an older Suka, but I don't think it's been redesigned that much. It's a little bit bigger, barely fits most carry on restrictions. You know, and speaking of airlines, another bag that I really like for airlines, and I've talked about this before in approaching the scene are these think tank rolling bags. And a lot of times what I'll do, you know, say this trip I'm taking to Patagonia for the workshop, when I fly, I'll load the most critical camera gear that I, that I have into this think tank rolling bag, which is just a big padded rolling camera bag. And then, you know, 
I'll check my f-stop bag with all my other things loaded into it that aren't quite as essential but maybe a little bit fragile. I'll just pack it full of stuff in the middle of a giant rolling duffel with my tripod in there, check this or bring this on the plane with me in the overhead and just roll it through the airport so I'm not carrying stuff on my back while I'm commuting. Uh, and then just reload the f-stop bag. I'll use this as sort of a storage suitcase in the van while we're traveling through Patagonia. And I can load and unload my backpack by moving things in and out of this. It's like a storage locker. And it just makes traveling through airports really nice. I think that that, that rolling bag is a really nice thing to have. So that's it on backpacks. I got a question on tripods and using them in the surf different types of tripod feet and keeping your tripod in tip top condition using it in surf, also how to stay steady in surf. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit, I'll come back with that. And, and someone asked you know, the right question, which is, which is do spikes on your tripod like these that are made by a three-legged thing, these are stilettos from three-legged thing, those are my favorite, um, really help in the surf? And the answer is absolutely. Whenever I'm going into an ocean environment, I have these in my camera bag. You just pull off your old feet, your old tripod feet probably look something like this. They're, they're made for wood floors or whatever surface you might be on. They don't sink in the sand very much. The great thing with these is you set them in the sand, boom, they sink. You don't want to put these on beautiful old soft wood floors. You're going to destroy the, uh, the scene that you're shooting. But out in the sand, these things sink, uh, and as the waves come in, they'll kind of set, and your tripod will stay relatively stable. You'll be shocked how stable it is with these spikes set in the sand. Now, I, I got a question uh, from John about the fact that, you know, often this, the, the, the people recommend that you leave the smallest joint of your tripod in and start working with the bigger joints just to be more stable. You know, I tend to use bigger tripods, big, nice, solid series three carbon tripods where I don't have to worry so much about that. I'd rather have the adjustments up where I don't have to go all the way down to the ground to get a hold of them. Uh, but for those of you that are working with tinier tripods, if you're in surf conditions, I recommend absolutely ignoring that rule. Put that littlest leg out with the spike on it and you're way less likely to have the water roll up and get into that lowest joint. Now you may be in deeper water, maybe you're wearing waders, maybe it's warm and you really wanna get that shot. And you may wind up with salt water inside these joints. Uh, I recommend no matter what, when you get back from shooting in the ocean, loosen these things up, take them in the shower with you, move them back and forth, move every joint back and forth through these, get water through them. Uh, and after a bit of time in the surf, particularly if they feel at all like there's sand in there or they're just not working as well as they should, you know, go ahead, disassemble them. I have a, a whole video on, on cleaning your tripod if you look back through these ATS videos, but you can disassemble them, wipe them down, put a little bit of grease on the threads, put them back together, clean all the bushings out, and you'll get your tripod back to working like new. You really wanna rinse stuff out with fresh water after it's been in salt water. Um, again, you know, these feet, these spikes, huge difference out in the surf. Uh, there's, there's three different types of tripod feet I like to work with. When I'm not using these spikes, my preferred backcountry wilderness feet are these rock claws. Really Right Stuff makes them. There's a few aftermarket companies. I got these from England a lot cheaper than the Really Right Stuff ones. Uh, they just spin off, spin on. They're really nice, sharp, machined metal. Uh, the grip in slick rock conditions and all kinds of different wet streams with smooth rocks. They grab a hold really nicely, don't slip and slide on you. If you're working in interiors and mixed conditions, I, I really, even in sand, if it's not got waves rolling in and out, I love these, these rotating feet. Gitzo makes them, Enduro makes them. They'll spin right on, you can kind of flip them around. They fold up. You can put them at different angles to catch different surfaces that you're working with. I like the, the, the moving feet. Those are pretty fantastic. Uh, and I use those when I'm here in the studio with my wood floors. Now, an, another thing, a good tip for carrying your tripod, whether you've got rock claws or these stiletto points, uh, Really Right Stuff makes nice spikes too. They're a little bit more expensive, but I like the three-legged thing ones a little bit better. Another use for these stone bags that I like for weighting down my tripod when it's windy or for 
just putting some gear like filters in when I'm not using it is that as you collapse your tripod to put on the outside of your pack or you're carrying it, you can fold your feet inside that, sort of cinch it up, close it down, and then that way you're not gonna cut yourself on those sharp rock claws or those stilettos. You can fold that inside there to pack on the side of your pack or to just carry it on the trail so you don't accidentally poke someone with a sharp rock claw or with a stiletto. So just another tip. So the three tips are, if you're out in the surf, use spikes. They're really gonna help you set your tripod solidly so the waves don't affect it as much. Open that bottom leg so you're not getting water into this joint and sand, particularly wet sand. You know, At least if, if this joint is getting hit, it's just by salt water, not nearly as much in trained sand this high up. So ignore that, that, that old rule about not using the lowest leg. And you know, protect yourself and others by loosening up your stone bag. Get a hold of one of these $10 stone bags. And I'm gonna put links to these feet, the stone bags, the rock claws, you name it, uh, in, the, in the video description. Just hit show more, it'll all be there. It's all always at my website too, at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. All right, everybody, thanks so much. Thanks so much for watching. If you've gotten all the way through to the end of this and you're not a subscriber, please think about click, clicking subscribe, click like, share it with your friends. I'm loving doing these things and I really appreciate the community interaction. So keep those questions coming, whether you drop them in the video comments or whether you run to send me an email or my website, I'm easy to get a hold of. All right, we'll see you next week.